For clarification, we're specifically discussing the bellbirds found in Central America and Northern South America, who are sometimes also known as neotropical bellbirds. There are, of course, because naming is never easy, other species of birds called bellbirds, such as the species living in New Zealand. However, the two groups are not related and simply share a common name. There are four species of bellbirds we'll be talking about today, and they are classified in the Procneus genus. Perhaps most well known as the birds with the loudest call on Earth, bellbirds are generally discreet unless it's breeding season, and even then it's the males doing all the talking. Adult females and male bellbirds are easy to distinguish from one another because they look so different. There are four species of bellbirds, and their common names are clearly based around the adult male's appearance. First, there is the three-wattled bellbird. These males have three dangly bits hanging from their bills, and come with a white head and neck and a brown lower body. Next are the white bellbirds, who are completely white save for the single gray wattle hanging from their beaks. Bare-throated bellbirds look quite similar to white bellbirds, except the bare-throated bellbirds have teal feathers surrounding their beaks and they don't have a wattle. Finally are the bearded bellbirds, with brown heads, black shaggy throats, and black wings. As we mentioned though, this only applies to the males. The females in all bellbird species come in varying shades of yellow and olive green. They often go unnoticed beside their ostentatious male counterparts, but even the males are more often heard than seen. Female bellbirds don't make the booming calls that give bellbirds their common name. Though, personally, we find their calls to be more like metallic gongs rather than bells. Here's what a bellbird sounds like. Male bellbirds make these booming calls, which can be heard more than half a mile away, to attract mates. When a female is interested in the male's calls, he'll put on displays including tail spreading, jumping between branches, and waggling his wattles, at least if he has them. If the female accepts, they'll mate, and then after that, she's on her own. Yep, these papas are nothing like emus. They leave the ladies to do all the work. The female bellbird may build her nest anywhere from 10 to 75 feet off the ground in the crook of a tree. The nest is small, as it only needs to hold a single egg. It takes just over three weeks for the egg to hatch, and then about a month for the baby to leave the nest, but it'll be years before they're ready to start their own families. Bellbirds are mostly found in wet forest habitats. They may live high in the mountains or down in agricultural lowlands. And some species, such as the three-wattled bellbirds, migrate between two landscapes depending on the season. A bellbird's preferred diet is fruit, and they especially love avocados. In fact, they actually help disperse the seeds of many of the plants they eat, either pooing seeds that they passed through their digestive systems, or regurgitating seeds that won't fit through their bodies. Male bellbirds are slightly larger than females, though as a whole they average 11 inches in length. Aside from avocados, bellbirds eat groups and berries. For more facts on bellbirds, check out the links in the description. Thank you to Jono Martin for today's request. Give a thumbs up if you learned something new today, and thank you for watching Animal Fact Files.